What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to talk about the software developer job market after coronavirus. All right, so if you guys are new to the channel, um, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to make these videos for you guys and put this content out. Um, my hair is looking absolutely crazy. I haven't had a haircut in probably like two months at least now. So uh, don't grill me in the comment section on that, y'all. I wanted to make this video because with everything going on right now, I've just been having a lot of thoughts about where the job market is going for software developers. Some of my favorite, even YouTube software developers, like, you know, Chris Sean recently made a video about him getting laid off. If you guys go back to the beginning of this channel, there's videos where I talk about Chris Sean being my motivation for why I started to go to Coding Bootcamp and make my YouTube channel and things like that too. So to see him a few years later, you know, after starting his own journey and teaching himself code and getting a job to see him get laid off it made me really wonder and think about like where the job market is going in general even for us as software developers so i put together a couple of points that i just have been thinking about and talking to other people about and just things that are going to be kind of i think important for people to think about as we get ready to transition into a new type of economy basically where a lot of things are gonna be, you know, more digital, more remote, and more technical. So the first thing is that I think they're gonna be a lot more competitive. I think developer jobs are gonna be way more competitive because boot camps are already starting to pop up a lot. They were already popping up before coronavirus happened. And I think this is a perfect opportunity for them to capitalize on their business model because a lot of people are gonna want to transition their careers now they're gonna want to take that leap even if they were on the fence before i expect to see the prices of boot camps drop or the business models and pricing models change a lot to make it more flexible for a lot of people of different income and backgrounds and uh, you know basically capacity throughout you know a given week to attend class i think that boot camps are going to get a lot more flexible into who they reach out to and what market they try to sell their curriculum too because a lot more people i think are going to be interested in getting into data science qa scrum master developer roles you name it i think all those roles uh they can be learned kind of from a boot camp i think all those things are going to get you know just spewed everywhere there's going to be a lot of people going to coding boot camps and graduating and then all applying for jobs across the country remote or not i think you're going to see a lot of people with similar backgrounds in terms of you know coming from a non-traditional college or computer science degree background all trying to flood the job market and get those zero to three year developer jobs it'll really come down to how well you know your technical stuff and how well you do in interviews and things like that that can really help you uh set yourself apart so that brings me to the, the second point that i was going to make i think the technical interviews in the future for software developers especially entry level software developers is going to be much more intense because they're gonna have to, like I said, they're gonna have to really filter people out and figure out how much studying you've done outside of just the coding bootcamp curriculum or how much you've actually built on your own. I don't know that, you know, in the future it'll be as easy to kind of just go in and talk your way through or just come from a boot camp and show your passion and then just sell that passion and then people are gonna be willing to like teach you and onboard you and train you up and stuff like that. So, you know, I think for sure that technical interviews are gonna get more thorough um, as time goes on after coronavirus as hiring picks back up for software developers. Third thing is kind of like an assumption, uh, like most of these things are, I'm, like none of this says that I'm gonna be right about it, but um, I think they're gonna hire less junior developers or they're gonna lower the pay for junior developers or just entry level software developers in general. And again, all these things kind of tie back into each other, but with the influx of so many people going and coming from boot camps and stepping into the job market or trying to get into the job market it's really gonna take something special about the candidates to really stand out from the rest of coding boot camp graduates you know um because with every cohort of coding boot camp graduates just because you graduate doesn't make you a, a decent or even good developer it doesn't even mean you really know how to code to be completely honest with you um so I think for that reason, the companies are gonna have to get way more selective about who they're bringing in because that is gonna be 
an even bigger risk now when you're hiring a junior developer or an entry level developer who you might expect to work from home for a decent period of time just due to the nature of coronavirus now and social distancing. So if you have to hire junior developers, you're gonna need to know that number one, they know what they're doing. And number two, that they're reliable. You can trust them to actually go do research and do things on their own while they're at home because you won't really be able to micromanage them the same way as if they were in the office. And yeah, you have to trust them to problem solve and things like that. So if you know somebody is just talking their way through an interview and they don't really have a passion for coding or they haven't really done a lot of projects, they don't really have a lot of experience and you pay them 60,000 or 50,000, as a junior developer to work from home, you could get somebody that ends up just being offline all day or that doesn't do anything or that always has you know issues or that always needs help. And so I think in order for companies to avoid that, they have to get more strict and more selective during their interview process. And then they're also gonna have to either like lower the pay or just not hire as many junior developers. So that's another thing to really keep in mind. The fourth thing that I was gonna say is I don't know if CRUD will be enough anymore. If you guys are unfamiliar with CRUD, it basically stands for create, read, update, and delete. And those are the main operations of like basically any application on the web. And so going forward, you know, I'm not sure if just having CRUD apps on your GitHub is going to be enough to really sell you, you know, in a job interview. And what I mean by that, of course, like most applications are going to involve CRUD operations, but what I'm saying is that I don't think the focus will be so much on whether or not you can build a CRUD application as it is, do you understand the concepts, architecture, and different tools and how to use them together? So do you know how to leverage cloud services with APIs? Do you know how to work with multiple APIs and consume them to, you know, to create some type of service that is useful or beneficial? Do you know how to expose that service to the outside world? And do you know how to deploy that service? I still build credit applications to this day, so I definitely would encourage people to build them. But what I'm saying is that I don't think it'll be the end all be all that if you have like one, three or five credit applications in your GitHub, that that'll be enough. I think you wanna show that you know testing and that you know cloud services and that you know microservices and that you know about APIs and deployments and things like that. So more or less just expanding the 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 broadness of your knowledge the last one is real world experience is going to set you apart and that's the one that i think is likely to be the most true the one i feel the most confident about being true probably out of all of them like i said before i think being a boot camp graduate would be like a nice to have and it's a nice asterisk by your name um and they'll know that you might be worth vetting and giving a shot in an interview but I think the real difference maker is for an employer, if I have a pool of candidates that are all bootcamp graduates, the one thing that's gonna set one apart more than the others is gonna be their experience. Whether that's how many projects they built or how many open source projects they've worked on, you're going to have to show that you can work remotely, that you worked with other people, that you know are at least are familiar with deadlines. You definitely wanna be able to show that you understand version control. With that being said, I would definitely recommend either offering to do projects totally unpaid for free and building apps for like somebody with a small business or somebody with an organization or just anything, build something for somebody else and use that as a real world project that you can talk about. You'll get product management experience, you'll get scrum experience, you'll you'll get time estimation experience, which I think is great for anybody to just understand like what you promise somebody that you're gonna deliver and then what you actually deliver and how long it takes you. You can work on an open source project, so you can just go look online for projects that are already in flight and see if there's something that you could help out with on that. And then also another, another big one is use cloud services. AWS or Azure or Firebase, it'll give you great cloud development experience and it's just a great like talking point to be able to show that you know you have these CRUD applications over here, but you've also done these projects and you've also done cloud development stuff, or you've at least played around with it and you've tried to incorporate them into your projects and, you know, just expose yourself to things like that because that type of experience is what's gonna set you apart from the people who just graduate from coding bootcamp and then show up at the interview and say, hey, I'm here and um, don't have much to show for it. So if you guys are brand new to software development, coding, anything like that, and you're interested, you wanna go to Coding Bootcamp or something like that, check out the description box down below. I'm giving out my free intro to Coding Bootcamp course. It has everything in it that I wish I knew before I went to Coding Bootcamp and it's completely free. So if 
if you go if you guys are interested in that it costs your email address so uh take advantage of that and lastly if you guys want to be a part of a community where there's other people who are trying to learn and code and ask questions and things like that make sure you guys also check the description box for the free private facebook group where there's people over there getting added and i put all the free resources that i don't give out on all the videos over there in the free facebook group so make sure you guys go ahead and check that out all right guys again this is darian with Dan the dev and this one i'll talk to you guys in the next video peace